This Anycubic washing and curing station might be just what you need to streamline your resin printing workflow. Resin printing is capable of some outstandingly detailed 3D prints, but in my opinion, it has two drawbacks. One is the speed of the prints that take a lot longer than FDM in most cases, not all. And the other is how messy the process can be. For some time now, I've been using a large ultrasonic cleaner and UV LEDs to do my washing and curing, but it's definitely far from perfect. The premise of this video is simple. I've been sent this washing and curing station from Anycubic for the purpose of making this video. So I'm gonna show you the unboxing, operation, and run it through some tests to see how it performs. The product in question is the Anycubic wash and cure machine. As you can see, it retails for US $200, but often a little bit cheaper on sale. This is significantly cheaper than its competitor, the Prusa CW1, which retails for between 500 to 700 US dollars. You'll also note that it says pre-order here. From what I understand, this machine has proven popular and they're currently out of stock. Delays from COVID-19 can't help either. This machine is designed to be a companion for your resin printer. And to do that, it has two main functions. There's a motor in the base that rotates a platform so UV lights can post cure the model. And we can also replace the platform with this sealed washing container, which we fill with isopropyl alcohol to wash our excess resin off. Customer reviews are excellent and that matches what some of my patrons have said. So let's jump into unboxing. This machine was well packaged, arriving in a box with a lot of foam. Included were a manual, power cable, power brick, warranty card, a couple of spares, and then the actual machine. All components were encased in specific pieces of foam to prevent them from jiggling and getting damaged during shipping. The build quality of the machine seems very good. It's aluminium and it's anodized, which gives the machine a professional and attractive appearance. The only preparation required is peeling the backing tape off the acrylic curing platform. Here's a quick demonstration of the two modes. We turn the power on from the side, and when we want to wash parts, we insert this container. It's got a bearing mounted propeller in the bottom, which pulls down magnetically and holds the whole thing in place. We then have a basket that goes inside of that to prevent our parts from going down and hitting the propellers, and then two mounts where we can hold our printer's build platform so we can wash both our printed parts as well as the platform without having to separate them first. This silver bracket is height adjustable, so we can adjust for either a short or tall model or the amount of liquid in the container. The interface is very simple with a mode button to switch between washing and curing, a timer between two, four and six, and then start and stop buttons. With the motor at full speed, it's still fairly quiet. Reconfiguring the machine for curing only takes around a minute. We quickly disconnect all of the parts intended for washing and put on the acrylic platform, lining up the cutout on the underside. We toggle the mode, put the lid in place, and then hit play again. It uses the same motor as before, but obviously the rotation speed is greatly reduced. One really nice feature for both modes is a safety cutout. There's an optical sensor on the back, and as soon as the lid is removed, it cuts out the motor instantly. Put the lid back in place and the program resumes with the timer counting down. Before we test this product, let's have a look at the setup that I'm replacing. I have a large ultrasonic cleaner and a LED UV lamp. For washing, I place the printed objects inside IPA inside the cleaner. The vibrations agitate the IPA and then it counts down on a timer until it's done. There's two problems here. Firstly, this machine is quite noisy. And secondly, the vapors from IPA are quite flammable. There's a commonly held idea that if an electrical component was to fail on one of these cleaners, it could potentially spark, ignite the vapors and cause a nasty fire. Fortunately, cutting off the oxygen supply quickly puts out the fire, but if we can avoid this situation, we definitely will. This machine instead uses a magnetic stirrer where the motor is housed inside the casing and the propeller is separated via the plastic container. The motor spins with a magnet on top, which matches up with the magnets inside the container to spin the propeller without physical contact. With IPA poured into the container, spinning up the motor without any parts in place reveals that this system works quite well. 
we get a very satisfying whirlpool inside the container. Putting the basket and a built platform in the way does diminish this, but I'm sure there's plenty of movement to achieve the purpose of cleaning. It does make me wonder, however, whether this type of setup is much safer. Either the basket or the platform will prevent the plastic container's lid from going on, and therefore our IPA vapors are free to move inside the machine. Let me know what you think in the comments. In terms of my previous curing setup, I would simply put the objects on some paper towel underneath a UV lamp. It worked okay, but it was quite unsophisticated, and I would need to rotate them manually to get all sides covered evenly. On to testing this machine, and by far my favourite method was to insert the entire build platform of the 3D printer inside the IPA container suspended from the included metal bracket. I really felt like this cut down manual handling of the parts post 3D printing and pre-washing. Typically, I went for a single 6 minute cycle and I noticed that 3 minutes in it would slow down and then the motor would reverse for the duration of the washing. This is a nice touch that probably helps it clean just a little bit more effectively. I also tested by manually placing parts into the basket separate to the build platform. I also tested washing some of my tools to remove excess resin before more thorough cleaning. When changing resins I even tried washing the entire vat which did save some time but I still did have to clean it manually afterwards. By far my favourite method was cleaning the print while still on the build platform. This was really good at protecting delicate little prints as it kept them all in one place and organized. The build platform you're seeing here is from the Frozen Sonic Mini. It was quite easy to adapt. Obviously the machine is going to work best with other Anycubic printers, but I still tested for some others I had on hand. The build platform from the longer Orange 10 wouldn't screw into place, but rested quite nicely on the bracket. Unfortunately, the geometry for the Creality LD002R wasn't quite right and some sort of adapter would be required. And obviously anything from a really large resin printer like a Frozen Transform is just not going to fit. Whatever your method, after washing, you'll need to separate your objects and allow the IPA to evaporate and for them to be fully dried before proceeding. After this, we're ready to cure and it's as simple as placing the objects on the acrylic platform, setting your timer and pressing play. You'll notice there's a little bit of jitter as the motor starts up and even while it's turning and some delicate objects are prone to falling over or off the edge because of this. This would be easily fixed by putting them on some blue tack or even some sort of rubber mat. Because of the inbuilt rotation, I felt comfortable putting two models in at a time knowing they would both receive even light coverage. For some objects, it's still necessary to rotate them and start the curing again but this repetition is still greatly cut down from my static light I was using previously. Typically, I went for two to three six minute cycles and there was enough room on the platform for lots of small objects or alternatively, a single large object. After rotating the models to ensure an even UV curing coverage, the parts came out completely dry to touch as well as feeling hard on the surface which tells me the UV post curing is complete. The magnetic stirring action had no adverse effects for some of the delicate models I tested, but it still seemed to be thorough enough to get inside lots of delicate nooks and crannies. This shot serves to illustrate that the container is completely liquid tight and won't spill, and also that after all of this testing, my IPA was becoming quite cloudy. And towards the end of my testing, this meant the introduction of some spots that were slightly shinier, indicating that the washer was not at peak efficiency. This is absolutely not this product's fault, as the same thing will happen any time you let the IPA get too polluted, as evidenced in this example from my previous setup. Based on my testing, I would say the performance of this unit is at least as good as my previous setup, but my workflow is a lot more efficient, because I can wash the parts still attached to the build platform, and I can quickly and easily switch between the two different modes. Based on my testing, I'd have to say it works. This thing is pretty simple in concept, but it seems to be executed quite well, and it does definitely improve the workflow for resin printing. As you can see, my IPA in this container is getting pretty murky and needs replacement. So in future, I'll be testing some of this, which I saw tested on a video by Uncle Jesse, which is eco-friendly and non-flammable, and hopefully a good replacement for IPA. The only real problem for me with this machine is not really its fault at all, and that's that it's designed for printers smaller than some of the resin printers that I have. 
I recently tested the Frozen Transform and that is capable of some truly enormous prints, with most of the prints being far too big to fit in this or my existing cleaning setup. That's why I've been designing my own open source washing, drying and curing station, which you can catch in a future video, as well as a review of the machine that did these prints, the Frozen Sonic Mini. If you've got feedback or ideas on how any of this could be implemented, please leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.